good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are. Uh, we would like to welcome you on our next TWF meetup. Uh, we are here together with Damian Antonovich, who will be our speaker today and who will tell us a little bit more about lessons which he learned from migrating to .NET MAUE. Um, well, so I think with no further ado, I will leave the floor for you, Damian. Uh, the scene is yours and we are waiting for your uh, webinar and for your speech. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you, David. So I'm very glad uh, that I'm uh, here and uh, I hope that my presentation will be uh, useful uh, for you. Uh, so at the beginning, let me uh, tell a few words uh, about me. Uh, I'm working currently as safe system uh, architect uh, for company uh, Demand, where I am working on our mobile application, which allows to control our uh, hearing uh, aids. So for example, the end user can uh, volume up, volume, volume down the hearing aids, or change the, or change the program. Uh, I used to uh, blog and tweet, uh, however, uh, for our for yes for two years now uh, I am happy father and uh, I don't have that much time as I used to have for the social activities so I'm very happy that uh, I can be here today with you to share the the knowledge uh, from the uh, application that we are working uh, in uh, demand uh, all right so let's get uh, started uh, so the basic question uh, is uh, why you should uh, migrate to .NET MAUI in the first place. I mean, uh, to migrate to .NET MAUI from uh, Xamarin native or from Xamarin forms. So uh, first of all, Xamarin as a technology has its life uh, cycle. And uh, Xamarin uh, life cycle uh, will end uh, this year on 1st uh, May. Uh, what that means, it means, according to Microsoft, the policy that there will be no more fixes, no more updates, and Microsoft will provide no technical assistance in any case. So you are just uh, on your uh, own. And uh, what's more, uh, Zamarin as a technology will support only up to uh, Android API uh, 34 and Xcode 15 SDK. And that has changed uh, in October last year. Previously, Samarin was supposed uh, to support only the Android API 33 and uh, Xcode 13 SDK. To better visualize this, let's look at the timeline. So as we know, this year, uh, Samarin will end uh, its uh, life in May. And you will be able to publish Xamarin applications uh, until next year, uh, because in the April next year, App Store will require to use Xcode 16, which Xamarin do not support. And uh, starting from June next year, you won't be able to publish Xamarin applications to Google Play, because at that time, Google will require to use API 35 or uh, 36. And as I mentioned previously, the timelines were looking uh, that. Uh, so in the original plan by Microsoft, uh, the Xamarin applications won't be able to support in April this year and June this year to Google Play. So I'm very happy that Microsoft changed uh, his uh, support uh, regarding the Android and SDK because this gives all of us a little bit uh, more time to migrate our applications to .NET MAUI. Uh, all right, and uh, if you will be need to build your Xamarin application uh, still, um, maybe this year or maybe next year, uh, despite your ongoing migration, because you might uh, need to release some uh, patch fix to your mobile application. And you are using the uh, Azure uh, DevOps as uh, we do. Then uh, you might start uh, wondering, okay, which uh, Azure DevOps agent I need to use to build a Xamarin uh, application to deliver my uh, fixes to the end users. 
So uh, let's analyze the available ag agents uh, which are available uh, right now, which is macOS 12 and macOS 13. And macOS 12 supports uh, Xamarin SDKs. However, macOS 13 uh, do not have even the Xamarin SDKs anymore. And as about the Xcode, Xcode support, the macOS 12 supports Xcode up to 14 and macOS 13 supports Xcode up to 15. Uh, about Android API, uh, both macOS agents support uh, the same level of API. And now we can conclude that uh, we just won't be able to build Xamarin using uh, Xcode 15 SDK on any available agent on uh, Azure DevOps. And however, uh, we will be able to build uh, Xamarin applications using the uh, Android API 34 on macOS 12 Azure DevOps agents. So uh, as about the building uh, iOS applications with Xamarin and Xcode 15, uh, what we will be need to do is to use the, uh, for example, on-premise uh, agents. Uh, when we can just install any software that uh, we need. So if you will need to deliver uh, the fixes for your applications, you need to keep that in mind. Uh, okay, moving next. Uh, the next question is uh, obviously, okay, which version uh, of .NET MAUI should I choose to, to migrate to? Okay, so let's start from um, reminding ourselves that that MAUI is part of the .NET from version 6. And we can look uh, at the .NET uh, support policy. So it looks like the looks like following. So .NET 6 uh, will uh, end support in this year in November because .NET has the long-term support. .NET, MAUI, .NET 7 has the uh, standard term support, which will end uh, which which Microsoft will end its support in May this year. And .NET 8 right now has the longest uh, support, which will end in 2027. And from that comparison, we can conclude that, okay, .NET 8 is uh, our target uh, platform for which we should uh, migrate with uh, .NET MAUI. However, .NET MAUI has a different support policy than uh, .NET. So according to Microsoft, .NET MAUI support policy uh, looks like following. So the previous uh, .NET MAUI major version will be support only for six months after the new major version is uh, released. So that means uh, .NET MAUI 7 is supported only uh, until May uh, 2024, which is this year. And .NET 8 is supported uh, up to May 2025. And this is important because uh, Microsoft is stating on their website that in order to receive technical support uh, from them and receive uh, the latest servicing updates, you need to use the latest uh, available .NET MAUI version. Uh, so from this, uh, Comparison, we see that the uh, .NET MAUI uh, for .NET 8 is the version uh, which we should use. But uh, let's also uh, look at other data. If we look at the .NET MAUI releases per version in the previous year, we can see that uh, Microsoft has released the most uh, uh, builds for .NET MAUI uh, for .NET 8. And what's more, during uh, our, our migration from Xamarin Forms to .NET MAUI, we have uh, seen uh, a couple of uh, issues that were uh, relevant to our application and the issues which won't be even backported to .NET MAUI uh, 7. This is example only of uh, two issues, but they were uh, many more, which will never be backported for .NET MAUI 7. So from that comparison, also it seems that .NET MAUI 8 is uh, the version we should choose. What's more, uh, we can take a look at the uh, official 
blog post that Microsoft is uh, providing on their uh, website. And we can see that all of the blog posts from the last year was basically about uh, the improvements and new uh, releases of uh, .NET MAUI 8. Also, the screenshot at the bottom shows the roadmap for releasing the new versions for .NET MAUI. And we can see that there are only uh, planned releases for .NET 8. OK, so we know that uh, .NET MAUI uh, for .NET 8 is the version that we definitely need uh, to choose uh, during our migration. And now uh, let's uh, talk about uh, our migration of our mobile application. And uh, I would like to give you a bit, or bit more context in which our mobile application is operating. Uh, so, as I mentioned, we have the mobile application for Android and iOS. Our application is communicating with our hearing aids, uh, which uh, allows end users to uh, change the programs, uh, adjust the equalizer uh, settings for uh, streaming, uh, turn uh, on the remote microphone in uh, iPhone, uh, change the volume uh, up, volume down, uh, also do the uh, remote uh, fitting, and so on, and, and so on. Uh, also, our mobile application uh, is connecting to Apple Watch. And from the Apple Watch, our end users can uh, do the basic uh, configurations to their uh, hearing aids. Uh, also, our mobile application is connecting to a couple of uh, cloud services like message service, uh, which will allow to receive the messages uh, by end users about important uh, news. Also, our application uh, is providing the firmware update uh, for the hearing aids. And as I mentioned, uh, the end user can also use the remote fitting so the user uh, do not need to travel to the clinic to adjust their hearing aids setting. He can connect remotely uh, to the clinic and get their uh, setting uh, adjusted for their hearing loss. And this is uh, not all of the context that we are operating in, but this is the context that I uh, can present uh, publicly. OK, and uh, let's move next. Uh, oh, here. This is. There are the couple of screenshots from uh, our mobile application, and uh, as I mentioned, the user can uh, change the basic uh, settings of their hearing aids. Uh, he can also check the uh, battery uh, level, uh, how much battery left uh, is in their hearing aids, and for how long he can still use their hearing aids. Uh, user can also see what was the last location of his hearing aids when he uh, lost it. So he can uh, go to that place and uh, search for lost hearing aids. Also, uh, our users can use uh, hearing uh, fitness uh, module to see the trends in using the hearing aids. And uh, this helps especially in the adaptation to hearing aids at the beginning when uh, the user is uh, started wearing hearing aids and start to adjusting uh, to them. So in hearing fitness, he can, for example, can set the uh, daily uh, wearing uh, goal, how much time he should actually wear their hearing aids to better adjust to them. Uh, all right, so let's move next. Uh, also in uh, demand, we are working using the uh, safe uh, methodology. And for our mobile application, uh, on our mobile application, uh, is working uh, seven teams from three different uh, agile release uh, trains. So uh, every team is consisting of the product owners, the developers, the QAs, business anal analysts, and also the uh, UX and UI designers. And working in uh, such uh, complex uh, setups is uh, quite uh, challenging, especially regarding the migrating from one technology to, to another. So before 
starting the migration, uh, we have started uh, wondering, okay, uh, we have such a uh, pretty complex uh, organizational uh, setup. We also have a pretty complex uh, application consisting of many, many features. So how should we uh, approach the migration? How should we plan it to be a successful migration? So first of all, uh, we have uh, came to conclusion that was a very obvious conclusion that basically we need the sync meetings. Uh, at the beginning, we had uh, two sync meetings uh, in a week uh, because it was the start of the migration. There was a lot of things to talk uh, about. There was a lot of things we needed to align on. Uh, we had need to make the a lot of technical uh, decisions uh, that came up during the, the work. And during the migration, uh, we have decided to have only one sync meeting uh, per week when uh, the stream uh, uh, work uh, was uh, maybe not lower, but uh, everybody knows uh, what to do. We have uh, in the past uh, made the decision, so we know, okay, we go in that direction. Uh, also, uh, what next? We have started uh, wondering, uh, okay, we are doing the migration and this seems like a perfect time to pay the technical debt. Because basically in, in every project, uh, we uh, take the technical uh, debt to deliver some uh, features uh, faster, to meet the deadlines. And we had uh, a couple of technical uh, devs that we wanted to pay and it was the perfect opportunity uh, to that. And uh, we have uh, been going to the technical debt uh, and analyzing which one should be uh, paid during the migration. And uh, which technical debt should be paid first to allow us to make migration faster and easier. Uh, what next? Uh, we have uh, also been evaluating the tool from Microsoft called .NET Upgrade Assistance. And from very high level, this is the console tool, which according to documentation should like migrate your Xamarin Forms application to .NET MAUI, uh, just like that. Uh, however, from our <laughs> analysis and from our tries with that uh, tool, uh, we didn't even successfully uh, migrate the Hello World application and uh, we just uh, decided not to go any further with that uh, tool because our application from technical point perspective was just too complex to rely only on this console uh, tool. Uh, what next? Uh, here's a link to Microsoft documentation about uh, migration, uh, which we were uh, using in our work. It consists uh, with a lot of very useful information about what is exactly changing uh, and what are your options and recommendations for the solutions. So I personally recommend this source of uh, knowledge. Also, uh, what next? Uh, as I mentioned, we needed to make the technical decisions about specific technical aspects and in order to be aligned with the seven agile teams we decided to use the so-called architecture decision uh, logs and the ADLs uh, were consisting of the owner of IDL which was uh, the architect the work group uh, which were working on proposing the solutions for specific technical uh, challenge uh, the group of the stakeholders, which was uh, the, our uh, developers. And as I mentioned, the solutions of proposals with pros and cons and the outcome. And that was a very uh, good idea, very good uh, approach, because if someone was not able to join our SIG meeting, he could then read the log with uh, all of the technical decisions that we were made, and he can uh, get the details, uh, why specific decision was made, why we chosen this approach and not the not the other one. And uh, to be very specific, what were the technical uh, challenges, what were the technical uh, issues, problems that uh, we needed to decide on? Uh, here is the 
list of the technical uh, ADLs that we were working on. It's not the full list, uh, but the list that uh, I can show. And uh, this list is about uh, the usage of the nuggets, using usage of the uh, approaches, because some of the technical approaches that we had previously were already built into the uh, MAUI itself. So there was also a question, okay, should we use our own uh, custom-made uh, solution? Or maybe we should basically switch to what Dr. Pau is offering. Maybe that would be better for us. Uh, so let's jump into the details of this specific uh, ADLs uh, to give you an idea what we were uh, being uh, challenging uh, with. Uh, so first of all, uh, in many projects in Zamarian forums, uh, probably you were using the RG plugins uh, pop-up to display, well, pop-ups. And uh, we have found out that uh, this uh, very useful nugget is uh, not uh, supporting .NET MAUI. So we couldn't uh, use it in, in our migrated application. Uh, so we have uh, started looking uh, for the uh, solutions, and uh, there was a very simple solution to that problem. Uh, what we needed to do is to use the alternative uh, nugget, which is called uh, mopups. <laughs> and uh, on the mopups uh, nugget page, you can uh, well on the mopups GitHub page, you can read that. Uh, Mopups basically is the replacement uh, of, the, of the RG plugins uh, pop-ups. And uh, we didn't even need uh, that much changes in the source code because uh, Mopups uh, tries to use the same uh, API uh, as the previous uh, nugget. Uh, moving next, uh, we were using uh, the maps in Xamarin forums for Find My Hearing uh, Aids functionality. And uh, the problem with the map control in .NET MAUI is that uh, .NET MAUI uh, for .NET 6 do not have the map control. The map control in .NET MAUI is available uh, starting from .NET MAUI 7. And uh, the API and namespaces uh, has uh, changed. However, uh, as I mentioned on the previous slide, Microsoft provided very useful migration uh, guide, and they have provided uh, what was the Zamarian Forms API and what is the dotted MAUI API. What are the exact changes to that APIs? So that was very useful for us, and it speed up the migration of the map control. So we know which new API we should use to uh, get the same uh, level of functionality as before. OK, uh, moving next, uh, we are also investigating uh, the problem uh, about how to migrate the splash screen uh, for our application. And there were two options. Uh, option one was to use uh, built-in mechanisms into the uh, .NET uh, MAUI, which is a very useful uh, mechanism because you just need to have uh, one splash screen uh, image uh, in uh, the SVG format, and it will be uh, automatically converted to the uh, splash screen requirements for uh, both platforms uh, by .NET MAUI itself. So very useful. Uh, however, on the other hand, we already had implemented our own uh, platform approach uh, in our Zamarin Forms application. So we were wondering, OK, we have our own approach, we have the Maui approach. So which one actually we should uh, choose during the migration? And we have concluded that uh, we will go actually with uh, our own uh, implemented platform uh, specific approach, because uh, we know it works. Uh, we know that we have spent uh, some time to uh, adjust uh, our splash scheme to our uh, UI uh, needs. And it's, as I mentioned, basically just uh, work. So we have uh, migrated this uh, whole solution to the MAUI, and it's still uh, working for us. So that was a very uh, good idea, which uh, allowed us to migrate uh, just faster with the splash screens. 
Another uh, thing that we were wondering uh, was about how to migrate the application icon, which is visible uh, in the operating uh, system. So there was uh, actually the same options as before, with the MAUI approach and our uh, custom implemented platform approach. And as before, the Maui approach is uh, also useful and simple. Uh, you have, you need to have uh, one uh, image, and it will be converted by the Maui for the requirements of specific platform. And we were also wondering uh, on this one, okay, which option should we choose? We have our own working solution, so should we really switch to the uh, new one uh, offering by the Maui? And as before, we choose them to stay with our working. Uh, proved the uh, solution and we have concluded that uh, those uh, options offering by the Tetmawi would be the way uh, to go for the new project because you are creating something from new you are creating something from scratch so it will allow you to deliver the uh, well it will allow you to deliver mobile application faster but in our approach we already had working solution so we decided to use that and uh, also one thing about the app icon uh, what we have uh, spotted during the migration uh, is that the uh, maui solution uh, actually do not support the uh, dark mode for your uh, icon so if this is something important for you you need to pay attention for that uh, okay what's more uh, yes uh, Xamarin essentials uh, also we were wondering uh, how to approach uh, that uh, because there is no uh, separate nugget for essentials for .NET MAUI. Basically, the Xamarin essentials now are built in, are built inside the .NET uh, MAUI. So what we needed to do was to remove the Xamarin essential nugget and update our uh, project settings uh, to tell that you would like just to use the uh, MAUI essentials. What next? Uh, yes, Samari Community Toolkit uh, is a very useful nugget with a lot of useful uh, controls, converters, and other uh, utilities uh, developed and maintained by the uh, community. And uh, the version uh, for uh, MAUI is uh, actually provided. So the community has migrated. They toolkit to the .NET uh, MAUI uh, with the same uh, APIs, with the same functionality. So what we needed to do is just to use the new nugget package, and we were uh, able to use uh, the previous functionalities that we uh, wanted to use. Uh, what's more, uh, we were also using the Lottie animations in uh, our uh, application, and it appears that that nugget which we were using to consume the Lottie uh, files is not uh, providing the version for .NET uh, MAUI. So we have started looking uh, around what we can do about this uh, issue. And it appears that uh, we can use the other nugget, uh, Skia Sharp Extendent UI MAUI. And uh, with some little changes to the uh, API because we needed to use a different API, different controls, we were able to still consume uh, and display the Lottie files with beautiful animations for our end users. Uh, also, uh, you may know that uh, .NET MAUI has uh, his own built-in IOC container and in our application, uh, we are using the dry IOC container. So we have started how to approach uh, this. Should we maybe migrate uh, all of the references uh, to .NET MAUI container? Should we um, stop using the dry IOC? Or maybe the other option would be that we can uh, combine working together the, the MAUI container with the dry uh, IOC, maybe that would be possible. So we want, so we won't need to go uh, all of the source code and change the APIs, namespaces, and namespaces. And that appears, uh, yes, uh, we, we can combine uh, using the, the MAUI built-in container with uh, the dry uh, IOC. 
All right, uh, what's next uh, is that we have started wondering, uh, okay, how to migrate the image uh, assets? And we have, uh, like before, uh, two options. We have uh, our own custom uh, implementation that was generating uh, PNGs out of provided uh, SVGs uh, files, or we could use the .NET MAUI approach, which, which was basically uh, doing the same but we've built in a mechanism and and, and in this uh, situation we decided to actually go with the .NET, uh, maui approach uh, because we already were using exactly the same approach and we could uh, remove uh, our own code so we uh, in that uh, solution uh, we we ended up having less code to maintain in the future so that was uh, very uh, useful uh, for us. We have removed the code and used built-in mechanics from .NET Maui, which was working uh, exactly the same as our previous uh, custom-made solution. Uh, and yes, <laughs> custom renderers. Uh, so we had a couple of custom renderers in our application and uh, .NET Maui is offering the new approach uh, it's called uh, the handlers so but on the other hand uh, the .NET maui still uh, provides you the possibility to reuse your custom renderers uh, but the recommendation from microsoft is to actually switch to uh, .NET maui handlers uh, which is the the new way to access platform specific uh, code uh, and in my opinion it's uh, way more convenient than using the custom renderers however uh, we were wondering okay should we really really uh, rewrite custom renderers to handlers especially if we had some complex uh, custom renderers maybe there is no point in rewriting uh, them and actually, uh, we have decided to go with the option uh, three. We have decided to uh, go specific uh, examples. So we have decided to go one by one, the custom renderer that we had in our application and decide case by case. Should we really migrate this custom renderer to the new approach, uh, which is handlers? and during that uh, exercise we have find out that hmm, actually we don't need some of the uh, custom custom renderers because the functionality right now is built inside the dotnet maui and for some uh, we have decided to just use the built-in mechanism in the maui to reuse the custom renderers and as I far as I remember uh, we didn't decide to use the handlers uh, for any of the custom renderers Okay, and what's next? Oh, yes, the, the effects. So uh, we had also a couple of effects in our Zamain Forms application, and uh, luckily, we can just uh, reuse the effects in .NET MAUI. Simple as that. Uh, of course, with some uh, namespace changes, but the whole functionality uh, remains uh, the same. Uh, what next uh, is uh, about border versus the frame control. So in our application, we were using the frame control. And what we can see in Microsoft documentation, so Microsoft is stating that the frame class is still present in the Maui only because of migration of Zamarin Forms application. And Microsoft recommendation is to use the border control instead if you are building the new .NET MAUI application. So we had uh, uh, three options on the table. Uh, one option was to uh, use uh, border everywhere. So remove uh, the frame and use border. The second option uh, was to still use the frame everywhere like we uh, were using uh, it. Or the third option was to use uh, the border where the frame uh, is appearing to have bugs in the uh, MAUI. 
And actually, we have taken the third approach because in some situations, the frame was uh, behaving to our uh, expectations. And in some other cases, frame was, pro was resulting in uh, the UI uh, bugs. So we decided to use the border instead. And the border in that situation was, was working as expected. OK, and uh, what's more, uh, in our application, we had uh, also the mechanism to dynamically uh, reload the font size. Uh, so if user changes the accessibility settings in their mobile uh, operating system, our application uh, was uh, adjusting to that. So if user wanted to have the bigger uh, fonts, our application was displaying the, the bigger for, fonts. And we had uh, two options uh, on the table. Uh, one of the option was to use the dot and Maui uh, build uh, mechanism because out of the box, the controls provided by dot and Maui are reacting to accessibility changes by uh, end user, and they are adjusting uh, to that out of the box. And the second option was to use uh, our custom made uh, implementation, which we made for Xamarin Forms. And we decided to go with the first option uh, just to remove uh, our own code. So eventually, we ended up in less code that we needed to maintain uh, in the future. And also, this code was uh, pretty complex and not that uh, and not that very well structured. So it, we really wanted to get rid. <laughs> Of, of it, and that was the perfect uh, situation to do that. And uh, the next, uh, ah, yeah. So that was the all the uh, technical uh, aspects that we needed to think about and make decision for. And as I mentioned, the architecture decision logs was uh, very good in uh, providing all of the details, all of the analysis, and providing the uh, outcome. So everyone uh, across three agile restraints could get familiar with uh, the decisions that we have uh, made. And moving next, uh, we have started wondering, OK, we have the uh, technical decisions, but what should be our first step towards uh, migration? Uh, what, which parts of the code uh, should we uh, start migrating? Uh, so uh, our application on the architectural level is consisting of the uh, libraries, which provides some specific uh, functionality. For example, we have the library for uh, logging uh, data, or we have a library for accessing uh, the hearing uh, aids uh, functionalities. And those libraries are used across the uh, source code by other libraries or by the uh, modules. And the modules are, for example, the, the sound control, uh, the remote uh, fitting on Find My Hearing Aids. So the modules basically are the set of the common uh, business functionalities uh, closed uh, together. And on the very high level, uh, migrating to .NET MAUI means that you need to do the namespace changes uh, because you need to change the XML forms to .NET MAUI. And you need to migrate, uh, for example, effects or migrate the custom renderers. So at the very high level, uh, you can just uh, go and uh, do these uh, steps. However, uh, our QA is uh, asked uh, as question. Uh, okay, when you can deliver something uh, that we can uh, test, uh, we can just grab and see how it works. And that was a very good uh, question from uh, our QAs because it gets us thinking that maybe this approach, which we are thinking at the beginning, it's not the best one because in this approach we didn't really know when we could deliver the working applications because it is so uh, complex. We have so many source codes to migrate. So we started thinking that maybe we can go with uh, the other approach and start with the small uh, steps uh, and iterate from that. So at the beginning, uh, we have created the 
.NET MAUI application completely from scratch. It was the it was the empty project uh, from which we have started started iterating uh, further. So uh, to be specific, uh, the next uh, steps was to start migrate the libraries uh, which has the least uh, dependencies to the other parts uh, of the source code, and so on and so on uh, until we have migrated all of the libraries uh, which were used internally by our application and then we have started migrating uh, modules step uh, by step well i mean not step by step but uh, start to uh, migrating modules uh, even in the parallel because uh, we always try to keep modules uh, separate in uh, at our architectural level uh, the same uh, as the libraries so uh, and this approach uh, was uh, good in our opinion because it allows us to deliver in every iteration some workable uh, build at the beginning it was uh, purely very uh, empty applications because we needed to migrate the uh, technical aspects of the application which i mean the, the maui app and the libraries and when we started migrating the modules, the functionality started to uh, growing, and our QAs could be able to grab the latest build and uh, verify the migrated uh, modules. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, moving uh, next. Uh, yes. Uh, about uh, some words about the, the testing. So. When we have started uh, discussing with the QAs, uh, how actually we should approach the testing. And as I mentioned, we have started delivering uh, builds uh, iteration by iteration with the uh, migrated functionalities. And we have also discussed and came to conclusion that this is the perfect uh, opportunity to run the full uh, regression testing uh, of the application, uh, just to ensure that it's still working uh, as it should work. Because uh, you might you might uh, say that okay, migrating to .NET Maui is basically about changing the namespace, uh, changing how you access your, your uh, UI uh, assets, and so on. This is uh, true. Uh, however, uh, we decided uh, to run the file regression test because uh, maybe some parts of the source codes was not migrated as they intended to. Also along the way, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have started paying the technical uh, debts. So we were doing uh, a couple of the refactoring uh, during the migration. So we also needed to ensure that the refactoring, uh, well, the refactored functionality is still working as it uh, should be uh, and also what's more um, we have decided to yes uh, write uh, the test cases uh, for the uh, regression and we have also decided to write those test cases in a way that they could be easily uh, automated um, so we run a couple of workshops with the QA and our test automation developers to align how exactly those test cases uh, should be written. Uh, what should be the step inside uh, each test case so then it could be easily uh, automated using our, our automation framework. Uh, all right, and so moving next. Uh, Yes, uh, we are still uh, migrating uh, our application. So the migration is not yet uh, completed. Uh, but uh, as you have just uh, heard, uh, we had a couple of the experiences that uh, we wanted to share uh, with you uh, to show uh, what we have been challenging with, uh, what we have taken into account during the migration, what we have found out, and what we have uh, what we have uh, learned. And uh, for sure, uh, we will uh, also wanted to uh, share the final, uh, our thoughts and experiences once the migration will be uh, finished. And uh, that's it, uh, what I have prepared today uh, for you. Uh, do you have maybe some uh, questions?
Uh, hi, hi again. Um, thank you, Damian, for your presentation. It was really interesting. Uh, I've learned a lot, not only about migration to .NET MAUI, but as well about mobile application and the migration process in, in general. So it helped me get the bigger picture. And to be honest, personally, I thank you very much for your hard work on helping people with hearing difficulties, because I know I have some people who need to use hearing aids in my family, and I'm afraid that I may need some aid as well in the future. So really, it shows just how important your work is, you know, that you are helping people with real life, real day problems. Um, I can see that there is some uh, question oh. from from uh, from our viewers. I don't know if you can maybe Piotr, uh, show it on the screen. Maybe Damian mm -hmm. can answer that. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, so uh, to answer the question, uh, the answer is simply uh, no. <laughs> we don't use the, we don't use uh, any third party uh, components. Well, I mean for the UI. We don't uh, use the libraries like uh, the vectors or Syncfusion. Uh, the one components that we are using are from the uh, .maui community uh, toolkit. Okay, thank you. And I have maybe as well one more question because you said uh, a lot of times during your presentation that you were using a lot of Microsoft learning materials. Mm -hmm. And do you have maybe any other sources you could recommend for people who would like to, you know, learn more? Of course, besides your social media, which you already mentioned mm -hmm. in the beginning, but mm -hmm. maybe, you know, you have uh, something else to recommend to people to get deeper with this knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, to be honest, uh, during the migration and working on it and planning it, I didn't found an a better source that than Microsoft uh, documentation itself and the uh, mm -hmm. Microsoft GitHub about .NET MAUI. So I can really honestly uh, recommend those uh, sources. They were, they were very useful for us. And as I mentioned, I didn't find any better. All right, that's, that's I think, great to hear that Microsoft is providing <laughs> you with all the information you need. Um, well, I don't know if there are any more questions. Well, maybe in the meantime, if someone- One more question like from to... my side. Uh, do you, did you find any kind of feature that you long thought of implementing and thought it's like really complex in Xamarin and then in Maui, it turns out to be really easy to uh, to implement? Yeah, <laughs> that was with the dynamic uh, font scaling. Uh, okay, but no, there was mentioned... something that didn't exist yet that you thought like, okay, we'll do it, but maybe uh, it take like three years to implement, and now right now it's uh, like, oh, maybe a weekend, then it's done. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good uh, question, uh, but I don't re re recall any such uh, features, and you know, to, to maybe get a get a bigger context. Uh, at the very high level, uh, well, we can say that .NET MAUI is like dot, it is like the Marin Forms six. It's it's not uh, the revolution to the technology itself. It's more like the evolution. So so there was no like the uh, features that we really hope for. Uh, however, I'm crossing my uh, fingers for such features uh, in the future delivered by Microsoft. Okay, and we have uh, one more question. Uh, in, like actually two more, uh, one again about from Vladko about, do you have any books maybe you can recommend? Uh, uh, yes, uh, to be honest, uh, when I was uh, learning uh, the .NET MAUI, uh, I was using only the Microsoft uh, official documentations, uh, the official Microsoft uh, uh, MS Docs, and also I was using the Microsoft uh, Learn uh, platform, where there are the tutorials uh, about uh, specific uh, things, and also about the .NET uh, MAUI. So I can uh, recommend those uh, two places, MS Docs and MS uh, Learn. 
And another question, uh, do you have, uh, did you make any code in cha uh, changes in code structure? Uh, uh, yes, uh, during the migration, uh, as I mentioned, we did a couple of the uh, refactorings in uh, our application, uh, which was, uh, which we were uh, postponing in the, in the past because that was the technical depth and that was the best opportunity during the migration to pay the to pay this uh, technical debt that was uh, really annoying uh, us and yeah at the very high level uh, maybe not that much changes to the architecture but uh, we combined uh, some of the projects uh, in, in, into one uh, because we have uh, concluded during the migration that it makes more logical sense to uh, combine the uh, some code structures uh, together but Nothing, no, not nothing that much uh, revolutionary for our own uh, ar architecture. Okay, and I think that's uh, one last question. Uh, did you notice any kind of performance improvements? I know that this is not final, so maybe it would be hard mm -hmm. to hard to spot already. But maybe, maybe there already is there like signs that something will work faster or works faster. Mm -hmm. Yes, and about the the performance is very interesting uh, question because. Uh, on the Microsoft uh, blog, uh, we can uh, see it was one or two blog posts about the performance improvements in .NET MAUI. So my Microsoft is writing about they made it uh, faster to start up, made it faster to display the the view. Uh, however, to be honest, uh, we didn't make any yet. Uh, strict scientific uh, benchmarks to compare our previous uh, application with the migrated one because we still didn't finish the migration so that, that there was no point of uh, doing the performance uh, measurements when we are not uh, with uh, migration done uh, yet but we are planning uh, to do that but to share our initial uh, thoughts it seems like the application is starting a little bit slower than the Xamarin uh, forms. So we see a little degradation in startup uh, time. However, this is something that we need to investigate further because at this point, we are not sure if this is the, the Maui issue itself, or maybe this is something that uh, we didn't uh, implement in our own code during the migration. So this is something uh, still to be uh, investigated and uh, proven where exactly is the is the issue. Okay, and I think that will be the final question. It's about the link to the app you you created. So it is available in the Play Store or uh, or any other store. Yes, uh, I would love uh, to share. Uh, however, I can't from the legal uh, pull point. Okay, <laughs> it's understood. And <laughs> of course. Well, in the meantime, if we don't have any more questions, or maybe there will be some still, um, I would like to remind to all of the people who are watching or will be watching that you can find these uh, materials on our YouTube channel. So if you would like to hear it uh, once more, or if you would like to have a look and see what was already in the past, uh, you can always have a look. Um, as well, if you are interested, I find I found this presentation interested, and I'm waiting for more. Um, I encourage you to follow our social media channels on LinkedIn and Facebook, so you can be up to date with our newest meetups. And as well, for those of you who would be interested to be on the other side of the presentation, as Damian was today, and uh, if someone of you would like to share their knowledge or experience. You can always visit our website as well on twf.community and there is a sign up button in where you can apply and be a speaker and share the knowledge with us as well as Damian did. Thank you very much and okay, have a nice guys. evening. Yes, uh, thank you for the invitation. Finishing. Thank you everyone for attending today and I hope the presentation was useful for you. It was. Thank you very much, Damian. Bye. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.